So let's suppose you're given a certain compound. And let's suppose you know what the molecular formula for that compound is. Now, if the compound is relatively simple, you can figure out what the molecular structure of that compound is using your molecular formula. But if the compound is relatively complicated and the molecular formula contains lots of different atoms, then it becomes very difficult at determining what the molecular structure is using only your molecular formula. Now, one tool that we can use to figure out what the molecular structure is, is known as degree of unsaturation. So, degree of unsaturation given by the Greek letter omega gives us the total number of pi bonds and or ring structures for that given molecular formula. And the formula to find degree of unsaturation is given by this guy here. So, 2n plus 2 minus x and the whole thing divided by 2, where n represents your number of carbons and x represents your number of hydrogen atoms. Now, when, whenever we're using this formula and we're trying to determine degree of unsaturation, we have to follow three important rules. Rule number one, replace all halogens with hydrogens. Rule number two, whenever you're given a molecule or a compound with oxygens or sulfur, omit the oxygens and sulfur in your formula. And rule number three, remove nitrogens along with one hydrogen per nitrogen atom. So, let's look at how we can use this rule and how we can use, or how we can use this formula and these three rules. So, let's begin with example one. So, in example one, according to our molecular formula, we have six carbons, so our N is six, and we have 12 H atoms, so our X is 12. So, let's use our formula to find degree of unsaturation for compound one. So, we have two times six plus two, Put that in parentheses, minus 12 divided by 2 equals. So once again, our n is 6, our x is, is, is 12. So we get 2 times 6, 12 plus 2, 14, minus 12, that's 2, divided by 2, and that gives us 1, because 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. So our degree of unsaturation for compound 1 is 1. That means that we either, we either have one pi bond or we have one ring structure in this molecular compound. So let's look at example two. Here we have five carbons and six H atoms. So once again, our N is six, our N is five, and X is six. So two times five plus two, so that's 12, minus six, that 6 divided by 2 gives us, well, 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. So once again, our number of carbons, N, is 5. 2 times 5, 10 plus 2, 12, minus 6 H atoms. So that's 6 on top and 2 on the bottom. So we have 3 degrees of unsaturation. So that means we could either have 3 pi bonds or we can have two pi bonds and one ring structure, or two ring structures and one pi bond, and one pi bond, or three ring structures and zero pi bonds. So let's look at example number three. So here we have five carbons, so our N is five, H, or eight H atoms, but now we have bromine, we have two BRs. We have a halogen, and that means we have to refer to rule number one, which states replace halogens with hydrogens. So since we have two halogens, that means we have two more H atoms. So we have eight plus two, a total of 10 H atoms. So our X is 10. So two times five plus two, that's 12, minus 10, that's 2 divided by 2 gives us, so 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. 
So this compound either has one pi bond or one ring structure. So let's look at compound number four. So example four. So here we have five carbons, our N is five. We have 11 H atoms, but we also have N atoms. So let's go back to our rules. According to rule number three, remove nitrogens along with one H. So every time we remove a nitrogen, we remove one H. So that means we no longer have 11 H's, but we have 11 minus three H's. Because if we remove three N's, we have to remove three H's. So we have a total of eight H atoms. So our X is eight. So our two times five, plus 2, so that gives us 12, minus 8, that gives us 4, divided by 2, so 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. So that means we either have two ring structures, zero pi bonds, one ring structure, or one pi bond, or two pi bonds and zero ring structures. Let's put an equal sign here. Example number five. So in this compound, we now have six N, so our carbon number is six. We have eight H's, but we also have two BR's and three oxygens. Recall that whenever we see an oxygen or sulfur, according to rule number two, we do not count them. We omit them in our calculation. But since rule number one states that halogens count as hydrogens, we have not eight, but eight plus two, so 10 H atoms. So our X in this case is 10. So two times six, 12, plus two gives us 14, minus 10, that gives us four, divided by two. So four divided by two gives us two. So once again, we have six carbons, so our N is six, two times six, 12, plus two, 14, minus 10, because eight plus two is 10, so 14 minus 10 is four, divided by two is two. So that means in this compound, we either have two pi bonds, zero ring structures, one ring structure, and Y pi bond, or two ring structures and zero pi bonds. So let's look at example number six, our last example. So now we have seven carbons, so our N is seven. We have eight H atoms, and we have one Br. So that means we have nine H atoms, but we also have three nitrogens. So we have to remove those three nitrogens. So nine minus three is six. Oxygens don't count, so that means our X is six. So, we have 2 multiplied by 7, which is 14, plus 2, that gives us 16, minus, we said that it was 6 for x, so we get 16 minus 6 divided by 2 gives us 5. So 16 minus 6, so 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. So this means we have some combination of pi bonds and ring structures such that when I add up my ring structures and pi bonds, I get five. For example, one type of combination is three ring structures and two pi bonds, or zero ring structures and five pi bonds, five pi bonds. So once again, degree of unsaturation gives us the total number of pi bonds and or ring structures in our compound. And we can use degree of unsaturation to help us figure out the molecular structure of our compound using our molecular formula.